Starting a new hobby can be so intimidating because there is a buttload of information out there and it can be really hard to know where to even start. To help combat this, I've come up with my list of 10 things that every new knitter should know. And if you are not a new knitter, feel free to stick around and let me know if there's anything else that you would add to this list. Hi everyone, my name is Natalie and I like to make knitting and crocheting and sewing and thrifting and really anything crafty videos and put them on YouTube for people to watch. <laughs> I've been knitting for a little over a year now, so I would say I am slowly coming out of that beginner phase and entering into my intermediate era. During this first year of knitting, I have learned so much and there have been so many key things that have helped me along the way and I'm going to share them with you today. All right, let's just get into it. Pause. I want to preface that this is all based on my opinion, obviously. That's what YouTube is, it's just a bunch of people's different opinions. So if you disagree, that is totally okay. But please feel free to add tips in down in the comments if I missed anything out because everyone has their own opinions and great ideas that go with it. All right, so my tip number one is something that has really helped me personally. So I feel like if anyone's gonna disagree with a tip, it might be this one. And that is when you're a beginner, I think it is best to only start and work on and finish one project at a time. And if you knit or do any kind of craft, you know that this can be really difficult because there are so many amazing projects and patterns out there and you just wanna do all of them. But I really think it is so valuable to do one project at a time. Give all your focus to that project, start it, work on it, finish it, and see that whole process through. A lot of times when I pick up another project, when I'm in the middle of a different project, odds are one of those is never gonna get finished. I currently have a work in progress or a whip that has been around for like two years and I can't finish it because I keep on starting other projects. Now with knitting, I've been really careful to start and then finish a project before I start another one. And this has been really tricky. Right now I am working on this summer top and I'm so close to being done. And every ounce of my being wants to pick up my sock needles and cast on a sock. But I know if I do that, I'm only gonna be working on that sock and that nice summer tank top that I want to have done in time for it to be warm is not going to be done. So I'm just putting all my energy into one project and so far that is what I've done for knitting now with crocheting and sewing that's a whole other thing but for knitting I have been able to do one project at a time. It has really helped me just like like I said focus and hone in on those skills and give the project the time that it needs. All right, my tip number two of things that you need to know is every time you start a new project, pick a project that forces you to learn new techniques. I think a lot of times beginners kind of get stuck in this beginner land of projects where all they're making is washcloths and hats, and those are great, but you're not really learning any new techniques. So I think every time you decide to start a new project, hopefully after you just finished the one that you worked on, pick something that challenges you and forces you to learn something new. Build those skills. You're not gonna become a better knitter if you're not constantly forcing yourself to learn new skills. So yeah, just challenge yourself. All right, thing to know number three is where to find great patterns. You really can find patterns everywhere. There are definitely a couple places that I usually fall to. And some of these things I didn't really know were options until I kind of have been knitting for a little bit. My number one option in terms of finding free patterns is going to be YouTube. Um, not only do you, you get a lot of free patterns, but you also have people that have taken the time to make a video out of it and can show you the steps so you can kind of follow along with them. So definitely check out YouTube great place to find patterns. The next option to find patterns is if you're willing to spend a couple dollars but you want a pattern that you know has been tested and 
size graded and a lot of care has been put into the pattern and that's going to be Etsy. Patterns kind of run anywhere I would say from like $1 to $15 depending on how intricate it is and how much time kind of went into it. I usually will buy patterns like for around five bucks and they're totally worth it. Like the instructions that you get through these patterns depending on the seller of course are usually so in-depth and Having a written pattern is also another thing that has really, is kind of like a little bonus tip. Take time to like learn how to read written patterns as well as like learning how to follow along in a video. Etsy is a great place to look for patterns that you can buy. Now, the kind of best of both worlds where you can find free patterns and patterns that you can buy is gonna be Ravelry. So if you haven't heard of Ravelry, it is this amazing community uh, for knitters and for crocheters. And it is kind of like a cult, knitting cult, like, like it was like a cult classic. I don't know how to describe this, but like it's not something you know until you like get into knitting or get into crocheting. And it definitely is more popular with like the older crowd of knitter and crocheters, but that definitely I think is changing and a lot of younger people are on it as well. But it is a place where you can like post community things you can talk about the projects and the different modifications that you're making and then people post patterns on there and there's also this amazing search engine where you can type in exactly what you want you could say if you want a free pattern or pattern to pay for or what style or color work or sizing or yarn you can even choose patterns based on like what yarn you have it's it's insane now the only downside to Ravelry is you really have to use it on a desktop like a laptop computer it doesn't have a great mobile site I can get away doing it on my iPad but on my phone it looks really messy and they don't have an app I think slowly they're working on creating an app but right now it's like a desktop website only so that is the only downside to it because for a while I didn't have a laptop so it was harder for me to kind of see the patterns but if you do have access to a laptop and like a desktop type situation Ravelry is super Super cool and definitely worth checking out. All right, tip number four is probably the most helpful tip that I can give you just because it has seriously helped me so much in my knitting skills and confidence and just everything. And that is finding a community. So this can be a little tricky sometimes depending on where you live. I happen to get really lucky and I kind of just like stumbled upon this community. Let me tell you kind of some places that you should check out to hopefully meet people in your area that like to knit and that you can even get together with on a weekly or monthly basis and work on projects together. Let me just kind of tell you how I found my community. So I go to a knitting club every Tuesday at a local Panera and it's just a mix of um, all these young and old, amazing women, sometimes men, and we just get together every week and we work on our projects. And it's not just knitting, people bring other projects as well. Like sometimes I bring my crocheting or whatever I'm working on. It seriously has helped me so much because there are people who have been knitting longer than I've been alive that come to that group. So anytime I had needed help or had a question I would go to them and they have been so helpful like I'm so fortunate for them now I found this group in a kind of a weird way out of a whim I came upon my local library that did this like fiber arts craft thing every once in a while I actually mentioned it in this video right here but they only do it during the weekdays and that was great for me in the summer because I'm a teacher but once I started work back again in the fall I wasn't able to go to those but it was at that group that someone told me about this group that meets in the evenings so places for you to check to find community to find a knitting community is going to be local library see if they have a fiber arts crafting group or get together if you have a local yarn shop, like a small business yarn shop, or really even Joann's, sometimes I, I can't remember if Joann's does any community events, but worth a shot to look. Check in with those people because I know a lot of like local yarn shops will have get togethers or workshops or things like that. Check out Facebook groups look for fiber art groups in your area because even if you can't to get together in a physical way just having like an online community is also really helpful 
if you can't find like a large community, just try to connect with even if it's just one to two people who know how to knit. Um, one of my friends who taught me how to knit, she's like my go-to person when I have questions. I'll just always ask her and she can help me out. And if it's something that I need to like see someone physically do, I bring to my knitting group because my friend lives like eight hours, eight hours away from me, which is no fun. So yeah, just like find that community, whether it's like through Facebook or even through YouTube, like there's a great fiber arts community in YouTube. Libraries, crafting groups, friends, yarn shops, whatever it may be, find that community. They have been so helpful and I don't think I would be as good as a knitter as I am without those people. All right, this next tip kind of goes back to tip number two. Tip number two was, you know, finding projects that force you to learn new techniques. And this tip is don't be afraid to start projects that scare you. I think one of the reasons why I didn't knit for the longest time is because it just looks so intimidating. Like the things that you do in knitting look a lot harder than they really are. My biggest example for that is socks. I was so intimidated by knitting socks but once I did it, it's like now my favorite thing. And here, if you are thinking about knitting socks, I have a video about 10 reasons why you should knit socks. Give it a watch. Knit some socks, people. They're so much fun. Personally, right now, a skill that's kind of intimidating for me that I want to work on is cables. I haven't done a lot of cables. And everyone I've talked to is like, oh my gosh, cables are so easy. Just do them. They're so much fun. But I just like haven't out a project that um, had them yet that I want to do but that's a skill that I'm working towards but yeah just pick projects that scare you because majority of the time they are always easier than they seem or even if they are hard at first you just have to get past that learning curve and then ends up being pretty fun and easy tip number six is to try to find supply secondhand when you start a new hobby you could spend a lot of money on supplies we gotta save that money for yarn, right? Try to find your supplies secondhand. Knitting supplies, I've never gotten a secondhand knitting supply and been like, oh, this is used and this isn't good because someone used it. No, like they're always in great condition. So I'm so fortunate to actually have like a secondhand craft store in my area that I go to religiously. But if you don't have that, keep an eye out in thrift stores. A lot of times you can find knitting needles there or Facebook marketplace, or even like if you go to a church and maybe there's an older lady who is getting rid of her stuff and wants to you know give it to a new home or whatever it might be try to find those supplies secondhand because they are out there and they are everywhere and you can get like bags of knitting needles for next to nothing and especially if you're not sure if maybe knitting is something that you're going to stick with for the long term you don't want to be spending all this money into things when you don't have to um, now of course I encourage you to stick with knitting for the long term but it happens so yeah try to find secondhand materials whenever you can just to save money and also help save the planet Tip number seven is to take time researching different yarn types. For some reason, when I crocheted for the 10 plus years that I crocheted before I learned how to knit, I like didn't really pay much attention to like what type of yarn I was using other than the fact of was it acrylic or was it cotton? Like didn't really use any other yarn types. But once I started knitting, I feel like yarn type become so much more of a factor. Not only like the weight of your yarn, but the fibers that are being used, the type of fur or wool or whatever, where it's coming from and what's gonna be best for what projects. So just take time to really look into that because that is something that can really like make or break a pattern if you're using the wrong yarn. Now some yarn is a lot more expensive than others, so also pay attention to maybe cheaper alternatives if that's something that you're worried about. Yeah, like watch some videos on YouTube, do your own research, go to a local yarn store. The workers there know everything about their yarn and can totally help you out and let you know like what yarn is gonna be best for your project. Look on Ravelry, they have, um, people can list like what yarns they use for the project and how it worked out so yeah just like take the time to research that because I think it helps you more than you realize I'm getting over a cold right now and I feel like my throat is still like Ugh. all right we're getting close to the end we've got three more tips left tip number eight is one a tip that seems kind of self-explanatory but maybe it's not or it seems 
like it's common sense, but make projects that make you happy and that bring you joy. If I'm not knitting something that I like, I'm not going to finish it. So choose things that make you happy. Use that yarn that makes you happy. Use colors that make you happy, especially if you're making something that you're going to wear. Pick the color of things that you would realistically wear and wear it a lot. And you know, that goes with like projects. Like, you know, I keep on coming back to this, but a lot of times beginners don't start with socks, but I really wanted to make socks because they made me happy, so I did it. So don't let, don't get stuck in this, oh my gosh, I'm a beginner, I can only do so many things, I can only use this yarn, I can only do these projects. Like, you can do whatever the heck you wanna do. So just do the things that make you happy and you're gonna like the process so much more if you're working on something that brings you joy. All right, tip number nine is a doozy. And if you are a crafter of any kind, I'm almost positive that someone has made a comment like this towards you, or you have like dealt with this problem in some way. I know I definitely have like so much. Don't feel pressured to make money off of your projects. And furthermore, don't feel pressured to make projects for other people. I cannot tell you how many times that I've told someone that I've made something and they literally go, oh my gosh, you should sell that. <sighs> Mixed feelings about this. One, I know that there are some people out there that love selling their items or love doing commissions and that is amazing, but not everyone loves that. Me personally, I really don't enjoy making something because someone told me to make it. I like making it because I chose to make it. Now that doesn't mean that I don't give things that I make to people, I do, but that's because I chose to make them something. So it's still something that I wanted to do. Versus if someone went up to me and be like, been like, oh my gosh, like I'll buy your yarn if you make me a sweater. No, sweaters take like 60 hours to do. Like that just is unreasonable. Now, if I had someone that I really cared about and I knew would appreciate those 60 hours that I put into it, I would make them a sweater, but that's because it's like coming from me and not because they asked me to do it. So I don't know if this sounds like really snooty. It's, I, I'm kind of get out, I'm gonna get like on my soapbox box a little bit here, but I'm tired of feeling pressured to commercialize my hobbies. I think the reason why I love them so much is because they are a hobby. Like, I already have a full-time job. Like, I went to college, I got my degree, I'm doing my job. Like, I, I'm good. I don't need to be making the extra money. I mean, of course, it would be helpful. I like it because it's a hobby. I like it because I don't feel pressure to do it, and I do it because I want to do it. So, don't get stuck in that. If someone asks if you'll make them something, it is okay to say no. Now, if you want to do that, like if you sincerely want to make them something, no, like please go make them something. But just don't feel pressured to say yes, unless that's something that you really want to do. Or don't feel pressure to sell your items unless that's something you really want to do. So let me know what you guys think about this one. It like seriously, like just for example, yesterday I, was buying a Jersey Mike sandwich. I had a purse that I had sewed and the girls at the counter were so sweet and this one girl like compliments like, oh, I really like your bag. And I was like, oh, thank you so much. I actually made it. And she's like, what, what? You know, we kind of talking about it. And then she's like, oh my gosh, you should sell those. Like, ah! <laughs> And I know that she just meant well, like, and I'm not mad at her or anything, but it's just like literally random strangers are telling me to sell my products. But I don't want to sell my products. I just want to make them for me and for people that I care about. So I don't know. That's just my opinion on it. And just, yeah, guys, don't feel pressure to do things that you don't want to do. All right, we're reeling her in with just a fun one. Tip number 10 is have fun and enjoy the process. Hobbies are supposed to be fun. They are supposed to be something that brings you joy. So if you're not enjoying the process, if you're not having fun, it is okay to put that project down and to take a break. You know, pick the patterns that you like, use the yarn that you like, do the things that you want to do, and just learn to enjoy the process. Knitting is a slow fashion. It is, it takes hours and hours and hours to perfect a craft and to make something. So if you're not enjoying the process, then like, what are you doing it for? So just take the time, enjoy the process, whether that's like, 
knitting things that you enjoy or maybe knitting in places that you like to knit like go to a coffee shop order a yummy latte and bring your knitting and put some headphones and work on your project like whatever that is just like have fun with it it is supposed to be fun it is not supposed to feel like a chore so if it starts feeling like a chore then maybe you need to set it down and take a break for a little bit and that is totally okay Whew. All right, that is everything. Um, thank you so much for listening to me and listening to my tips. And again, if you have any questions, if you are a beginner knitter, let me know um, below in the comments. And if you watching are not a beginner knitter, it, feel free to answer their questions down below or add any other tips that you think might be helpful for someone who is just starting out. All right, friends, I think that is all that I have for you. Thank you so much for, you know, tuning in for another chatty time with Nat. Chatty Nat time about knit. Chatty chatting about knit with Nat. Mm, there we go. Chatting about knit with Nat. Whatever it is. I don't know. Yeah, I hope you guys have a lovely rest of your day. And I will see you guys in the next video. If you haven't already, it would mean so much to me if you subscribed to my channel, gave this video a like, shared it with someone who's a beginner knitter, and comment something down below. All those things, while they might seem really small and easy for you to do, they actually help me out in such a big way. So I really appreciate everyone who takes the time to do those things. Thank you again. I love you guys. And I will see See you later. Bye. Also, do you think I have enough plants? I've got a lot of plants. <laughs> I've got I've got a lot of hobbies. I got a lot of hobbies. All right, bye, friends.